Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. Today I would like to share with you 10 tips that I hope will make your work with Unity a little bit easier. If you sometimes wonder where are your empty objects, uh, you can actually assign icons to them. So for example here I have empty object called spawn point and over here uh, where this square is I can select an icon. So for example now I selected red dot and as you see it suddenly appeared in the standard window. Uh, what's important? Uh, if you select um, the peel instead, the object's name will be visible as well. Sometimes you may want to use your custom icons, so there is option for that too. You can select uh, one of the existing icons or you can use your own too. But sometimes simple icons are not enough. So that's when uh, the tip number two comes in. If you would like to draw a custom shape, you can use onDraw Gizmos and onDraw Gizmos selected methods of the mono behaviors. So, for example, here I have a simple computer, right? Desk with computer, and it's let's say interaction zone, right? So here um, is this red circle, which in fact is a sphere. So in 3D, uh, it's sphere. And when I select the computer, you see this yellow line connecting it to the safe. So, for example, um, this way you can know that using this computer you can open this particular safe so this is pretty handy for things like um, keys and doors or like um, you know interactions that you have to follow certain way like full path and, and this type of things um, in terms of uh, the round gizmo or the circle obviously you can use it for as i do the interaction zone or you can for example you have a raycast and you want to see the exact uh, circle with radius or you have a box cast and you want to see the exact uh, box shape with the right size. So this is pretty handy. How you do it? Simple. In the mono behaviors, uh, you can have those classes, Androgismos, Androgismos selected. Obviously, Androgismos is um, executed always, so those are those shapes are visible when the objects are not selected. And Androgismos selected is drawing the shapes only when the item is selected. Now, you have pretty uh, a lot of different methods to use. For example, you can draw a cube, frustum, whatever it is, um, icon, line, mesh, ray, sphere, and here's the interesting part. So you have also the wired versions. So as you see here, I use the uh, wire sphere. If I would change it to regular sphere, this would change uh, to a solid um, sphere. So I'm sure you will find some use cases for that too. Tip number three is uh, a little bit connected to that. So sometimes you probably would like to see the, the gizmos in the game window. If you are like me, usually you go to Sen and then you just debug, you see uh, what is where. But turns out that in the game window, there is this small button which you can press and then see all the gizmos uh, in the game as well. So, pretty handy thing to know about. You will like tip number four if you debug a lot. And we all debug a lot, right? So, here I have the player script on my policeman, uh, just to make sure I select it once again. And you see I have those variables visible. But sometimes there is a situation I wish I could see some more variables, those that are private and not serialized. How to do that? Very simple. I click on those three dots and change from normal to debug mode. Suddenly you see the number of uh, visible variables increased a lot. Just have a look at the sprite renderer here and the normal version. Ooh. And time for tip number five. So if you tend to get lost in your uh, sun, like I do very often, and you need to find a particular object, you can click on it in the hierarchy window. So for example, let's select the save, move the mouse over the sun window and press the letter F. Woohoo! And time for tip number six. Uh, if you have quite a lot of different assets, uh, different folders and you spend a lot of time looking for the right one uh, you can actually use the search over here so it allows you not only to search by name so for example i could start writing t-e-r-r -R, right to find the terrorist script and the terrorist prefab and the terrorist um, sprite actually one is sprite and one is the texture 
awesome. So then I have those ones, but you can also search by type. So for example, you can start with letter T, then you do colon, and then you can write the type you are interested in. So for example, sprite. And you see suddenly I have all sprites here. Then I can uh, press space and type any text I want. So for example, police. And you see suddenly I have um, all the sprites that contain the word police in their name. Uh, what's very handy and important is that you can actually also uh, add labels to your assets. So for example, let's go back to the um, sprites. Here I have a policeman uh, texture. What I can do, you see I have this small icon on the right here. I can press it and I can select any of the existing labels, but I can just also um, type my own, for example, policeman and hit enter. And this um, label is applied. And then if I want to search, I can also search by the label. So I'll colon and you see only those two things have this label, that's texture and the uh, actual sprite. So police, yes, that's our policeman. Beautiful. Now, uh, what's important, you can also combine these searches, so you can use end label and sprite, for example, and even better, you don't have to remember all the types and all the labels, because you see those two icons here. If you click them, here you see mm, different types, and if you click here, you can see different labels. So for tip number seven, small change of scenery. So here I have my uh, 2D character, which consists of many different parts. So body, um, legs, head, and so on, so on. And this is pretty problematic because around all of that, there is the wrapper object character. And I wish I could just always select the character when I click it the first time, right? So instead of, you know, selecting a leg or a sword, I would like the whole character to be selected. And it turns out there is a way to do that. Uh, you can either select a script that is already on that object. So for example, I have the player script. You could just add the uh, selection base attribute. When I save it, let's go back to Unity. And if I click now, you see the character is selected. So if I sell, if I click second time, then obviously the uh, specific part will be selected, but it's like, you know, mm, switching on and off. So first time I select the character, second time I select the part of it. Again, character, and now the sort. So this is pretty handy. And another tip as a bonus for that tip, um, you could actually just create a small script, which would be called selection base. Magic, open the script, remove everything there, a little bit too much, and just do selection base. And now you have beautiful reusable script that you can use for any object that you want to be a base of the selection. Woohoo! And here's tip number nine. If you go to this magical page called YouTube, then slash ptitnet, enter, and you click this beautiful red button over here, you will suddenly become the best Unity programmer in the world. Nah, now time for real number eight. So here I have a simple scene from one of my tutorials. And here on the left, in the hierarchy, I have quite a lot of different game objects. And now, if you hover on them, like hover over them, you will see on the left there are two icons. And if you sometimes want to hide certain objects, you can do it without any problem. So for example, here I have background trees front, and I can very easily hide them. So suddenly I can see what is happening there. What's important, if I start the game now, they will not be hidden. So you basically do not switch the sprite renderers, you just kind of disable them for the editor window. And tip number nine. So we talked about the first icon, 
but there is also the second one which is even more useful to be fair if you mark with it the items they will become unselectable so let's just quickly do that yes i think that's all the important stuff if i try to select them now i won't be able to so you see i'm clicking and i'm not able to select any of the items i have not i have marked with this icon and if i click on something that is not marked with it i still can select it this is pretty handy especially if you have uh, a lot of game objects in, in in your scene and you just need to work in a small like area where there is a lot of them in one place so this is pretty handy to know about also um, here on the top you can just click to disable all or enable all and the same with showing and hiding and here we are for the 10th last tip so sometimes there is a situation where you want to assign um, something to a verbal in the inspector uh, but it is pretty problematic because uh, you click somewhere the script disappears and you have to find the object once again either in the scene window or in the hierarchy then you see okay i'm still not there ah oh, jesus again disappeared so it turns out you can actually lock the inspector there is this small lock icon and if you click it then whatever you select basically will not matter because the inspector will stay on the locked object now this is pretty handy but what is even more handy you can have more than one inspector and to do that you simply just click on the other object in the um, hierarchy click right button and somewhere there there is this magical option called properties and suddenly we have the character properties and the angry block properties and we can easily drag um, things from one screen to the other i hope you learned something interesting and useful and if you have any other tips or comments just please drop a comment below um, if there will be enough tips i will gather them together and create another video of course mentioning all of you so have a fantastic day love you and bye bye